Hello YouTube, my name is the Bro Tanner Chip, and today I want to go ahead and take an opportunity to go check out the Phasmophobia new training ground. So I haven't had an opportunity to do this, I'm going in completely blind, let's give it a shot and see what it's like and how informational it is. <laughs> All right, here we go. Into the training. Are you sure? Absolutely. Yo, I like the loading screen. So this is going to be a really, really is going to be a new area that I've never seen before. Almost like a custom map specific for the training. As the patch notes had specified. All right, what do we got here? Welcome to your first day at Ghost Hunting Distribution. Oh Make my goodness. To get started. Oh my God, we're at Ghost Hunting Boot Camp. Let's go. Here at Ghost Hunting Distribution, we'd like to welcome you to our training facility. To start, grab a flashlight behind you. You can toggle the flashlight with the use if equipped or special if it's in your inventory. Okay, so use being obviously the right click and special being the T button on default. You can cycle through your held items to charge, uh, to change which one you're holding. You can carry three items at once. When you're ready, grab the key to the right, then interact with the keypad to the left to open the door. Wow, this is very, very descriptive. Like this is, they're taking you exactly through every single step you need. Oh, and here's little post-it notes tell you what the buttons are. F to place, E to grab. Oh, that's incredible. I like that a lot. Yeah, this is already significantly better than the old tutorial was let's get this yeah right click to turn on to turn on your flashlight if it's in your inventory it's the t button let's grab our key interact with our keypad and get on inside oh look at this looks like like they put up like you know some like divider construction walls between each one all right Ghost room. Your first goal when entering a haunted location is to find the ghost's favorite room. This is a room where the ghost will spend the majority of its time. To find the ghost room, look out for open doors. Items that have been thrown or sound coming from the area of the location. When playing higher difficulties, ghosts can change their favorite rooms when wandering. To open door, interact with it, and move forward. My opinion is that if you are new to Phasmophobia, first, learn the mechanics of the game. Then, learn how to hide. Learn how hiding works so you can survive. And then if you survive, you will know how the ghosts operate. You'll be able to identify them because you'll be able to observe them and you won't be dead. So that's that's my opinion there. What do we have here? Oh, I see. So are these all these whiteboards going to have reminders about the buttons? Interesting. Okay, so you're never going to forget as you go through. Open another door here. Oh, we're going to the next section. Very good. Very good. What are these? Oh, they're nothing. Okay, they're just, they're just there. Room one. Interact, mouse one. Okay. What's in room one? Nothing. All right, these are not interactable. They're just there. Think. Head through the door to the next section. Room two. I got into this room and I heard a voice say, exit to the, through the door to the next section. That's interesting. What what is the point of these two rooms then? Room three. Oh wait a minute! I just heard something get moved. Something got thrown. This door is open. Sanity. Each investigator has their own sanity level. Represented in the truck by a percentage on on a screen. When playing in a team, you will also have an average sanity level. Several things can lower your sanity. Standing in the dark, ghost events and abilities. You can restore your sanity level by using sanity medication. Try drinking one using a bottle below. It'll take a few seconds to replenish. Try it out. Grab one. Then use it. You should uh, see your sanity increase on the screen to the left. Okay. Boop. All right, we can see here. Just average sanity is 49. I'm the only player. Uh, my, my, my player's name says loading. Which I guess is, is because they can't identify the exact player in this map. Maybe it's some sort of coding thing. Here we go, though. I drank it. And, of course, you can see it go up as Sanity would Good job. would indeed do. So my really, my big curiosity is what... Oh, I can't go... Oh, wait, I can't go back. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, was a, it was a pull-out door, not a, not a, not a push-in door. What, are the, what was the point... Anybody see that donut just move? 
What is going on? The cups are flying off the table. All right, so I guess the ghost is here. This is the ghost's favorite room. I guess, the, okay, I'm starting to see. I guess these one, two, and three rooms were meant for you to be able to test to see if you can figure out which one was the ghost's favorite room. In this case, it was room three. And the reason I knew that is because it was throwing stuff inside of the room. I see. It's all coming together now. Sanity is back up to 88%, 90%. Alright, we're inside. Lighting. To keep your sanity stable, you should stand in a lit rooms or areas as much as possible. You can turn lights on using the switch, aim at the switch, then interact with it. Each location has a maximum amount of lights that can be turned on at once. If you exceed this number, the fuse box will trip and turn off every single light. You can turn the fuse box back on by interacting with its switch. Try tripping the fuse box by playing with the lights to the right. Let's do it. Here, light switches. Oh, I love that the uh, the the lettering there glows. Well done. Okay, we broke it. We broke the the breaker. Then we go over and turn it back on. And then your lights would be operational again. Very good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it is very important to keep as many lights on as possible. Uh, based on the changes that have been in Phasmophobia this past update, you can't really rely on candles anymore to be able to preserve much of your sanity. They do preserve sanity, depending on what tier of candle you have, will preserve more uh, than the lower tier candles. But still, you'd want to rely on the, the, the light if you can, because you're not going to have a candle with you 24-7. Unless that's how your play style is, which is cool as well. All right, moving on. Moving on up. Electromagnetic fields EMF in a normal contract. You'll be, uh, you will find in a normal contract, you will only need to find up to three evidence types. But for this training, we'll be showing you all seven. EMF spots are left behind on almost everything that a ghost interacts with. These hot spots last around 20 seconds. It can be read with an EMF reader. Grab your EMF reader below, turn it on with use, then move it towards objects that a ghost has recently interacted with. Some ghost types will leave stronger EMF hotspots. If your EMF reader is displaying a strength of five or higher, this is evidence. Open your journal by pressing the journal button, click the evidence tab at the top, and then EMF five is checked. Okay. So they're going to give us tier one EMF readers to do this test with. And then obviously, if you have EMF five, you go in your journal, boom, EMF five. These are your remaining ghost types. What I'm a little interested about is that I was kind of hoping, I was kind of hoping that they were going to give us all the EMF readers, tier one, two, and three, and explain the differences. I feel like, especially if you're a new player or a player that's just going through the motions, it's not going to be super, super easy to figure out the differences between all tier one, two, and three of every single equipment. I think they have tool tips in the shop, but the tool tips aren't very helpful. So people are going to have to look for external sources and, and guides to be able to tell them what they all do and how they benefit from each one. So I don't know. I was kind of hoping that was going to be inside of the game itself, inside the tutorial, so that people could rely on that. I'm not saying that this is bad because it gives you the general idea of what EMF is and how to use it, but I just wish there was that extra layer of knowledge that people could be able to gain. All right, moving on. All right, nothing to be EMF in here. Thank you. What, what did I do? Oh, something just throw. I heard it. Ah, ha. There it is. Okay. There you go. You got EMF. It's not an EMF-5, though. It's the EMF-4. Also, another thing that I'm thinking about now that I'm looking at that is it doesn't explain what which each EMF means. Like, sometimes you'll get a ray teleporting to you, and it's only going to give you an EMF-2. Or um, you're going to get a ghost interaction. It's going to give you an EMF-4. So things like that. I wonder why they didn't explain that in the tutorial. I mean, that's kind of important information to know that you can't really get from inside of your journal. Yeah, you can't really get that from the overview and all these... All these pages and stuff. It doesn't tell you that. That's that's not there. So you would hope that would be inside of your tutorial to be able to learn that. Okay, moving on forward. Some ghost types will leave you behind uh, UV handprints on doors, windows, and even footprints on the floor if they walk into some uh, some well-placed salt. To find these, listen out for uh, paranormal interactions on those objects, then grab your UV light, activate it with the use button, then shine it around and see what print from prints have been left. 
If you find UV handprints or footprints, make sure to note them down as evidence in the journal. Lastly, if you shine UV light onto a print for long enough, it will become charged, allowing you to swap to the camera to snap a quick photo for some extra cash. I'm so glad they added that last paragraph in because that's something that was added with the new patch. You have to actually have the UV evidence charged in there. So when you take a photo, it'll count. If it's not charged and you can't see it, you will not get credit for that photo. That's new as of this patch. That's very good that they included that in. We got our tier one UV, which is the glow stick. We'll always be with you. Well Who? Who's going to be with me? Oh, there's handprints. Okay. Well, we said don't leave. Oh, okay. They got some things hidden over here. I like it. I like it. Got the footprints going on to the next door like that. Very cool. Maxed up is freezing temperatures. Ghosts are known for making the area around them colder, but some ghosts will push these temperatures below freezing. When navigating around a location, you may notice your breath being frozen in front of you, uh, visualized by a cold cloud of air. If you find this, it may be worth checking the temperature of the room accurately. To do so, grab a thermometer and walk into each room, uh, then check the temperature as they adjust. You're looking for anything below freezing, 0 Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit, if you find freezing temperatures, mark it in your journal. Now, it's, it is worth noting that within this update as well, that if you see a freezing breath, it does not necessarily mean you have freezing temperatures. Freezing breath can show up like from 5 degrees Celsius and below. So you always have to double check with the thermometer. Uh, a lot of people back before the update actually came out, they were just relying on seeing their freezing breath. They would never use thermometers. So this actually gives thermometers a major importance. And it is why it's now one of the basic pieces of equipment that you don't even have to add. It's there by default. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do some thermometering in these rooms. All right. It is slowly going down. So the one thing about these tier one thermometers is that they take a long time to update. It takes a while for it to drop. But as you can see, it's gone from 20 Celsius down to 15. And I'm sure it's going to go even lower than that. So potentially, that's how you can find your ghost room. Okay. Uh, okay, these are these are more rooms here just to be able to test out your temperatures. I see, I see. All right, now onto the next door. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. It's locked. I can't go any further. I'm stuck here. I'm just gonna sit here, and let the uh, the thermometer get low. I guess I'm gonna see maybe if that unlocks the door or not. No, it's still going. It's going down to five Celsius. I don't see my breath though. I don't see my breath. I wonder if I have to see my breath. Interesting. It's below 5 Celsius in here, but I don't see my breath either. It's going down to that zero. And it's freezing. Okay, I guess... So in order to pass this point of the training, you have to be able to get actual freezing under thermometer. It is interesting to note that I don't see the freezing breath that they were noting on the uh, the whiteboard. I wish they would have added that so players who were doing the tutorial could have seen that in real time, but... Oh well. On to the next! Dots uh, projectors let us see things that normal lights does, do not. Uh, sometimes using this light will reveal a small flicker into the paranormal world. Several ghost types can be revealed with dots projectors. All you need to do is find them. Grab a projector, turn it on with use, and aim the light where you think the ghost may be. If you see a ghostly silhouette appear, then you found some evidence. Try to find a ghostly apparition in the room to the left. And then mark it in your journal. Alright, here we go. We got our dots projector. What does this say? Dots projector. When a ghost reveals itself in dots form, it will walk towards the ghost, uh, the closest player, if they're inside the same room. You can use this to get uh, those particularly shy ghosts to come within range of your dots infrared lights. Okay. Makes sense. Oh, they got picture diagrams here. Okay, so you can see there's a silhouette right there of the pajama ghost. And here is one of the, one of the female ghosts. You can see it. I like the. I do enjoy how easy it is to see dots now if it happens it's kind of hard to miss unless you have tier one dots then it may be a little easy to miss because the tier one dots are a little finicky a little finicky but look at that oh my god look at that Good job. it looks like a bunch of ghosts with sheets over their heads 
and they're moving too. That's amazing. I like that a lot. So you can see here very vividly that there is, there are entities here that are just chilling. On to the next. Okay, ghost orbs. Often when filming paranormal evidence with a video camera, investigators have found unexplainable flecks of light that slowly drift across their footage. These have been named ghost orbs. To find them, grab the video camera and turn on night vision with the use button. During contracts, you can place the video camera down and view the camera feed from safety of the truck. Search around the ghost room and look for any small flecks of light moving around. If you find one, mark it in your journal. Interesting. I wonder if they're going to tell us about the ability for the ghost to now throw the camera. Uh, maybe when we get to the tripod section, it'll explain that. All right, we're inside this room. We got our, our, our sheeted up ghosts, and we're looking for some ghost orbs. And the smallest camera known to man. Straight out of 1990. I did, I did see a ghost orb. It, it was there for a second. Oh, there it is. Let's see if I can get closer. Right there. Right there. Little fleck flying around. All right, we've done it. The voice came on, so we can move on to the next section. The door is open. Ghost writing. Some paranormal entities will interact with more objects than others. In several reported cases, ghosts have been known to write vague messages in books le and, uh, if left long enough. To get ghost evidence, grab a ghost writing book and place it down somewhere near the ghost. After some time, the ghost will either throw the book or write in it. For the latter, note the evidence down in your journal. Here we go. One of the things I really like that they did in this update is that just like the crucifix, if you go to place this down, you're going to see that circle around the book that tells you in what radius the ghost will actually interact with that book. So if you're inside of the favorite ghost room, you're going to want to try to make sure that the circle is in as much of the room as possible. And then place it so it's centered. So here we go. Okay, we got to wait for the ghost to be able to write in that book before we move on. I wonder for the sake of testing if we could just put all four, put all four of them in there. <laughs> Get, give her, increase our odds. Oh, there we go. Well done. Oh, we wrote that one. Okay. Perfect. Okay, we got ghost writing. Does help me, please. I'm sorry, ghost. I wish I could help, but I have to move on. I was writing in more books. Spirit box. EVP recorders are, uh, or spirit boxes are radio devices designed to scan through different frequencies, possibly revealing some paranormal audio amongst the static. To use a spirit box, grab, uh, grab one below and turn it on with the use button. Make sure that all rooms and light that are uh, that all that are turned off. So basically, you can't have any lights on in the room in order for spirit box to work. Uh, then you can ask the ghost questions um, and hope for response. Try asking, where are you? If you get a response, the indicator will flash white and you should hear a voice that uh, that's unique amongst the radio frequencies. If it flashes red, your question was heard, but it didn't get a reply. Enter the next area and find the ghost room um, and try it out. Let's do it. Okay, so I've turned it on. You can see that the power button is on. The little red icon there next to power indicates that it is on, and you can hear the, the radio frequency going. The ghost just threw a cup at me. Where are you? Okay, so there we go. When I hit when I hit my V button, you can see that the little microphone icon has a white symbol on it, meaning that it's hearing my voice. Uh, but when I ask a question, depending on that little ghost icon on the right-hand side, if it blinks red, the, the question was heard, but it wasn't responded to. And if, the, if that little icon or that little bubble is white, it means that the ghost did respond. Let's go ahead. Where are you? Oh, I'm a fool. I was inside of the, I was inside the lit area. I got to go to the dark area. See, see, we got to We got to read the tutorial. Where are you? How old are you? Are you near? Are you far? Where are you? Are you angry? Are you Italian? Are you French? Where are you? How old are you? Can you speak to me? Where are you? Interesting. We're not getting a response. Oh, I can turn off this light. Maybe we have to turn off that light. 
I guess we can't. It's not enough to be just in the dark part of the room. You have to actually turn off the light. We'll see. Where are you? How old are you? There we go. We got a response. Okay, so I would recommend when you're going through the tutorial, if you want to go ahead and go through it yourself, turn off that first light. Maybe that'll make the difference. Maybe the ghost or the, the response is only going to happen in this first room. And there's nothing in this second room. Who knows? But moving on forward. I love these little lights here. I don't I don't know why, but it's giving me like real like this is like a construction room vibe, but I, I'm totally for it. Hunts! During contracts, ghosts can initiate an attack on you and your fellow investigators. These attacks will have a chance to occur once your sanity has reached an average threshold of 50%. Some ghost types might attack earlier or later than this. Depending on the difficulty you are playing, you may have a setup timer. This is normally displayed on a large LED clock in the truck. The one you can see right here, it says five. Um, like the one to the right. Okay, this uh, will stop your sanity going below 50%, as well as prevent hunts. When a hunt starts, the exit door will lock and the ghost will start searching for you. Turn off your equipment, hide in a locker, or crouch behind something tall and wait until it's over. Enter the next room to stimulate a hunt. Okay, this is great. Um, I definitely think that I'm so glad they ended up putting 50% as a baseline for the hunt because so many of the ghosts in this game do only hunt at 50%, but some of them hunt a little bit earlier, some of them a little bit later. Shade being a little bit later one, they, Shade only hunts at a little bit lower sanities. Demon and Fae will hunt at higher sanities, but as a general baseline, 50% is your go-to. All right, so our general sanity right now is around 90, 88. Let's go inside. All right, ghost. Right. Ah! Hide. Quickly. I'm hiding. That was a close one. There we go. On your the shortest hunt ever. The truck by interacting <laughs> with the Generally, hunts are going to be significantly longer than that one. But one thing I will actually add into this. Oh shit! It's hunting again. Wait, what happens if I die? Oh. If you die in the tutorial, it puts you back. One of the things I was actually going to um, go ahead and comment on that I didn't mention this tutorial is if you're hiding inside of a locker or a closet, it's very important to do this one major thing. Right. Go inside your locker, left click, drag it into your body and hold it. Hold the left click. Do not release your left click trigger because what this is doing, this is holding your door shut. And if the ghost ever goes ahead and pries it out of your hands, make sure you go quickly go back, left click, and bring it back in. Immediately. Do not delay. If you have any delay, the ghost can kill you in that moment. Let's get out of here. Hey, it's the truck! Enter the truck and use the equipment keypad to exit. So that was the tutorial. That was it. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't mention tripods because I was actually talking about that with video cameras. Um, and tripods are actually essential now almost to having video cameras work. If you place the video camera on the ground and you don't put it on a tripod, the ghost has a high chance of throwing the video camera and knocking it out of place. But if you put it on a tripod, it has a significantly less chance of being able to knock over that camera. Um, if you have a tier one tripod, you, it has a little bit of a higher chance. The better tier tripod you have, the less likely your camera is to get knocked over. So I'm just going to add that as a little snippet. Also, smudge sticks. Smudge sticks are one of the biggest parts of this game to survival and doing objectives. I mean, I would have loved to have been able to see a smudge stick tutorial in here. I think that would have been massive. Um, yeah, okay, let's, let's get out of here. Is that the end? Maybe there's more? No, that was it. So I guess the point of the tutorial was to go over very basic equipment and hunting. Uh, there's a lot more stuff on this board over here that you can see that they didn't include inside the tutorial. Uh, crucifixes. Sensors. I really like that freaking sensor, by the way. It looks awesome. Uh, sound sensor, which is over there. Um, tripods. Smudges and incense. Candles. I mean, there's so much. So you're only scratching the surface of the tutorial, but I think it's a good foundational start point to a new player. And if anybody ever has any questions about anything else in the game, obviously there's a lot of content creators on Twitch that'd be happy to help you out. If you ever want to go tune on into their streams, there's a lot of people who make uh, content out there for the game as well, like myself. So you, there's always people out there to be able to assist you. Hope you found this walkthrough helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed the commentary and hopefully you found that helpful as well. It's a little bit of tips and tricks I gave here and there. If you did find this helpful, please feel free to subscribe for more videos. Try to create this content as often as I can. In the meantime, stay crispy, my friends.